let's recap viewing working, completed, and filled orders. Now again, the Zener 360 is customizable, so you're, you don't have to have your platform arranged in this particular order, but this is what I'm most comfortable with. The positions window will show all open, currently open positions. The active orders window is going to show all active orders, orders that have been placed but have not been filled. And filled orders is going to show all orders that have been placed and are now filled and completed. You'll notice the state will say either completed or canceled in the filled order windows because these are orders that are no longer working. So we're going to go ahead and place an order so you can see what it might look like in the active order window. Okay, and again, we're trying to buy an E-mini S&P at 21.27.75. This order is working. It's been placed. It has not been filled. If you want additional order details, you can put your cursor over the order itself, and you'll notice a little window pops up. You can do the same thing in your filled orders. If you're looking at filled orders and you put your cursor over a particular order, it's going to show you the order number, when you placed it, the price you placed to that, when it was accepted, when it was filled, or canceled. Any order that we have in our active orders can be easily modified if you click on it. Toggle the price up or down, and then click Modify. The current market price is $21.28.75, so we're going to go ahead and modify the order. Another thing is you can uh, click on the price itself and modify it this way, a little quicker. And again, now that we are filled, you'll notice that our order comes to the bottom of the Filled Orders window and it's now included in our positions window. You're actually long two, we're long one from a previous lesson. If we wanted to exit these positions at the market, we could simply click on the position and you'll notice that it populates your order ticket and then we can hit transmit. It'll automatically be a market order, but you could change it to limit. Or you could right click it and choose exit at market. And we're now flat, net position zero, we are flat. One thing to keep in mind is if you right click, you'll notice that there is an option for exit all at the market. You probably don't want to do this. If you hit exit all at the market, it's going to liquidate your entire account. So every position that you have on in your account will be offset. Generally speaking, especially if you're placing options, that's not the best way to go about it. If you're placing trades in liquid futures markets and you really just want to pull the plug and get completely flat, that's the easiest way to do it. Just be careful. Don't do that unless you really mean it. You might also find the account summary tool interesting. Uh, it's going to give you your account stats. Now keep in mind, if you are an option trader, the portfolio margining may or may not be as accurate as you want it to be, but there are other ways to get accurate margining figures, and I'm going to show you that a little later. But this will give you some good information, what your net, net liquidation value is. That's basically the money that you have in your account after you liquidate all the positions, assuming you can get liquidated at the prices that are being shown. It's going to show you your open profit and loss, your realized profit and loss, which is the profit and loss on the trades that you've exited, and it'll show you your total. One thing to keep in mind is this platform is a little bit unique relative to some of the others in that it calculates profit and loss based on the bid-ask spread as opposed to the last trade. Now, this really is only going to come into play for option traders. For futures traders, they're not going to notice, not going to be a big deal. But for option traders, it will possibly be a big deal, particularly if you're looking at the platform during off hours, for example, in the middle of the night, or during the afternoon pause, or at some point when the option market's closed, or the market makers simply aren't there. Sometimes this can happen uh, right before a big news announcement, like for example, the crude oil inventory report or something like that. In a nutshell, because the platform is valuing trades based on the bid and the ask, it's possible that temporarily the bid and the ask balloon. And this again happens when market makers pull their bids and asks. So for instance, let's look at one of these positions. We have a 129 put in our account. The bid ask is 15 bid at 16. Obviously, that's pretty tight. The last trade is 16. So with a position like this, you're not going to notice whether your platform values it based on the bid or the ask or the last because they're all relatively close to being the same. That said, not all options trade all the time. So if you have a platform that's valuing your positions based on the last trade, it could be using a quote from yesterday, it could be using a quote from a couple hours ago, or it could be an actual current quote. You don't know unless you look at the bid ask. That's the beauty of this platform is it uses the bid ask. The only downfall is if you're looking at this platform in the middle of the night, rather than a reasonable one or two tick spread, you might see a 10, 20, 30 tick spread, or if there's no market makers there, you might see something insane. Some person has an order to sell an option for a couple thousand dollars that's worth a hundred bucks today, and that's the only order working at that particular time. So you may see some 
some crazy values in your account, but it's temporary. When the market becomes liquid and everything comes back into line, it'll normalize. So don't panic if you see that. Unfortunately, there's not a perfect way of doing it. There are advantages to using the last trade. There are advantages to using the bid ask spread. Neither is perfect. Just have to kind of choose your poison. I can uh, honestly say that in the heat of the moment, when the markets are volatile and you truly need to know what your position's worth and what your account is worth, the bid ask method is far more accurate and far more realistic. 